what's going on guys and girls welcome back to another video and now having fully completed the story and got the shiny charm it's time to give my honest opinions on pokemon scarlet and violet let's get right in so just to completely break down this video in terms of what i'm going to be talking about we're going to be looking at graphics sound controls, storyline and replayability as our main factors of what we're going to be looking at throughout the whole of the video. To start off with the graphics, I've gone with a couple of pros. We've got vibrancy of the colours, Pokemon textures, clean aesthetics in the menus and complete control of camera angles in and out of battle. Vibrancy of the colours, even at night, is very good. The Pokemon pop, everything pops against the background. Usually we see on some other Switch titles that if it's got a nighttime function in the game, it usually washes all the colours out. This is not the case in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which I'm super happy. Obviously, Pokemon textures have been revamped and also the reworked the animations as well, especially when you go into a picnic. I know people don't really look at picnics, you just either stand in front of a basket for eggs or you're in and out quickly to make a sandwich, but the reworked animations for those Pokemon sleeping, running around, playing around, it's been completely reworked. I think a lot of people are overlooking uh, the amount of time they've spent on the models and the animation. They've got a clean aesthetic of the user face and menus which is by far the biggest breath fresh air since Sword and Shield. I thought that the menus they looked a bit childish. Now they're super clean, everything's in a super nice font, it's really easy to read. 10 out of 10 for the clean aesthetics, especially on the health bar as well. The health bar is a big one. Complete control of camera angles in and out of battle. So I recently found this out on a stream, uh, not last night, the night before. You can actually control the camera, not only in battle, but like when you're hatching eggs, and then you've got the whole overworld. And basically in any situation, they're giving you complete control of the camera angle, which I really like, and it's a really nice touch. Those are my main pros. And I suppose we now have to come to the cons. So it's been a massive, massive debate on graphics, like actual visual graphics. So I've gone for the cons as frequent major graphical glitches. So this is like appearing under the map, stuff not spawning incorrectly, low polygons, stuff just disappearing in front of your face, reloading uh, textures and animations very up close when it should already be loaded. We've got render distance is incredibly small as well. So as you're approaching things, things just seem to pop up. They don't like fade in um, like Legends Arceus. They just seem to pop up there. I mean, does it take away from the playability? Probably not, but for some people that is like a game breaker. In specific areas, including major cities and towns, and especially the uh, Tag Tree Thicket, which I've done a shiny hunt for, Shrewdle and Grafii, which was successful by the way, has major FPS drops. I think the game runs at a base 30 FPS. We're talking it's getting down to less than 10, and it's incredibly noticeable, and it does take away from the gameplay when you're your screen literally jitters between trees you could miss pokemon you could miss that shiny that you're really trying for poor optimization it needs optimizing in in some way um especially what another point that i brought up on here is switching from cutscenes to open play or open play to cutscenes it's it's so janky your camera stops there's a little lag period and then the cutscene starts and then when the cutscene comes back out there's another lag period of where the camera's just paused and nothing's loading it's not brilliant it's not brilliant and we know this everyone's expecting a graphical patch i don't think it's going to come anytime soon i'm talking maybe with the dlc and then another point i've made at the bottom not so much related to graphics but nowhere else to state this is there is persistent game crashing like full on game crashing you lose everything and it seems to be completely random so i've had it a couple of times when we're trying to complete my pokedex which is really annoying so i've lost pokemon that i've caught so i've had to go recatch them um and it happened to my friend nick where he's also trying to complete the pokedex and the game just fully crashes obviously you can get around this by having auto save on but a lot of shiny hunting techniques and date resetting involves having auto save off what I have just resorted to now is leaving it on, especially when I'm trying to do something like storyline or Pokedex completion. Obviously, Shiny Hunting is a completely different story. Yeah, leave autosave on. It's not worth taking it off with the completely random game crashes. You could just be running through an area and the game just goes, bunk, gone. You can't recreate it. 
and I don't understand why that's happening and I don't think it should be happening on a release. Okay, next up we've got sound. Now this is very hard to fault as many of the overworld themes are really catchy and complement the gameplay. Some of my favourites are the champion battle theme, team star boss battle, Medali, which reminds me of Pokemon Colosseum, the Bamboo Forest area, so I was recently hunting Bisharp and I, I was proper jamming to the bam, Bamboo Forest area, and the Professor Battle theme at the end is like a proper super epic, what a final battle should sound like. It's really hard to fault the sound, I think they've pulled back some um, composers from Sword and Shield and some older games as well, and I think they've done an amazing job with the sound. Pokemon Cries, it, they haven't changed, they seem okay in my ears, I'm not the biggest audiophile out there, but everything seems to mesh together and it's a super easy one to cover, so sound I'll give like 5 out of 5. It's They've they've done an amazing job on the soundtrack, I've I loved most of the game's audio tracks, I haven't found a single thing boring or annoying, there isn't any like UI clicks or really annoying beeps or buzzers. They've done a really good job on the soundtrack and I'd give them a 5 out of 5. On to controls. Now I've got a couple of things to pick out here for the controls. Um, I'll just read down the list of pointers that I've made and then we'll elaborate on them a bit later on once I've got through the list. So controls have slightly changed from Sword and Shield because of new features like Let's Go. Despite graphics being clean, the menus are very clunky and unresponsive. Um, I find myself struggling to find specific items in the bag sometimes, so the bag is very cluttered. When on Rai Pokemon, interactions with the map and the overworld can be very buggy, and then the Rotom phone needs tweaking to reduce button presses to get to specific screens, i.e. the Pokedex. Now, let me just break down those points as a, an overall. So, Sword and Shield, I think, because we've played it for so long, the button mapping, you get, you get it in your uh, muscle memory from your hands that you just press buttons and you can navigate the menus really, like, super intuitively. Now there's in, been introduced of introduction of new features, which we all want. Um, the buttons have changed slightly, so let's go, I've gone to the, um, the R buttons, which has kind of thrown me off a little bit. I know that this is just like a personal issue and I'm sure I will be fine once I get used to the controls, but at the moment you'll see me on stream, I'm opening up menus wrong, I'm jumping on and off Maridon, um, I'm trying to find stuff in the bag, and I can't because there's so many items in the game, I don't know how they've organised them anymore, um, I find myself struggling to find just the easiest of item that I should be able to just fly through the bag, it's like it's a battle item, go straight down, but all the battle items are like stored with all your candies, and it, I feel like it should all be separate, it should all be separate. They've given us extra menu space, so I don't see why they can't put extra pockets in the bag. The Rotom phone is especially annoying to me, like, you pull it up, you, then you have to press X to get to the menu. Also, the map is just... oh. So annoying. So I've got it locked to north because if you don't have it locked to north, you have no clue where you're going at all. Like you have no point of reference. Your map's flying everywhere. It needs a third layer of zoom as well. So you zoom out once, you zoom out twice. And you need that third layer of zoom where you want to see pretty much half of, if not the full map, with still stuff on, not just where the gym leaders are. It's super annoying. Going back to a point where you press X, you go into the Pokedex screen, the Pokedex doesn't then come up as a list order, it comes up as whatever you, the original Pokedex, so I'm imagining there's going to be DLC Pokedexes across the top, and then you've got the recent Pokemon that you've seen underneath. Now, graphically, it looks great, and I think it looks graphically stunning, but as an intuitive menu, doesn't work at all, does not work. Like, the fact that you have to press two free buttons to get to the Pokedex instead of Sword of Shield, which is open your menu, open the Pokedex, it's done. It's there. And plus then you have to filter in a certain way to then get the Pokemon that you want. It's just, it's not intuitive. Otherwise on the controls, roaming around the overworld, yeah, it, you find yourself crouching or pressing B too many times to try and latch to a cliff or try and navigate your ace through some Pokemon that have been spawned in right in front of your face. Another thing that's slightly annoying is if you are in a battle and you say you've flown in or you've glided in or you've jumped in and then you try and come out, all the wild Pokemon 
are just surrounding you, so without beating them and you just try and run away, you constantly get into encounters. There is no like control over that. Like you can't just jump out because it jumps you out into another encounter. So the controls are, are, are very good to a certain extent, but it's mainly the menus and then like the bugginess of climbing. There's no lag. There's no input lag. There's no like delay. It seems pretty fine. The, navigating the battle menu, which is the main one, seems perfectly fine. They've got all the right information on there, so I can't argue with the controls too much. Just slight niggly bits that of uh, generally personal. On to the big one in my eyes, replayability. Now, in the past, I think they've managed, especially with Sword and Shield, they've managed to get a good amount of replayability out of it. I think it was only about two years into the cycle that Pokemon Sword and Shield was a bit bland and dry. Once the DLCs had come out, there was not nothing much left to do, but they managed to drag it out. They got they got the dens, they, they did all the den events. People were kind of bored of them. They did do a ditto one, which everyone went ballistic for, um, but they've kind of got the replayability right. This game, the post game, lived up to expectations. The post game is amazing. Area Zero, Paradox Mons, the storyline behind the post game, creme de la creme of post games, I think, by far. Like, trumps any other Pokemon game. The difference between the main game and the post game in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is night and day. Night and day. The game is very tailored to competitive and will hopefully get more people into the community as well. Like, this is seen by you don't really notice it through your playthrough until you start looking at mons and movesets they've changed a lot of moves they've taken stuff off some mons including like expanding force off in dd accidentally gave it trick room though which is a a big debate at the moment taken like grassy glide off rillaboom even though Rillaboom isn't in even in the game. So they're obviously planning for the future. They've got some brand new moves in. They've changed how Hail works in terms of giving defense boost to ice types like uh, Sandstorm did the special defense boost to rock types. They've done a lot of optimizing in terms of competitive battling. I think they've put a lot more singles mons in there. So there's a the very good singles base core of Pokemon. That, because the singles format have been kind of neglected since they've decided that doubles is the VGC format and I agree that doubles should be the VGC format but we shouldn't take it away from people that do actually like to battle in singles so I think they've tailored to that very well they've done it I think just an amazing job in the competitive side of things they've balanced it really well now they have made a decision outside of the game to go open team sheet in in VGC format don't think they needed to do that I think they just needed to open terror types so you know what terror types are coming so it's not just boom completely random it's like ha here's my bug high dragon lol get wrecked um, but no other than that sticking to the game itself the base game itself they've made some very good changes and I did like how the mechanics of the competitive battling was shown throughout the storyline especially with the double battle in the ghost town that was amazing um, and then obviously the main post game for most players is shiny hunting and it has improved drastically with very me various methods being viable however it being like a sandwich that you don't need the shiny charm so you get like a level 3 sh um, herba mystica sandwich that gives you encounter power catching power uh, title power is one of them as well um, and then shiny power to obviously boost your shiny odds but also you've got like um, the isolated method that Austin John has described where you find the one steel mon in a certain area you use a steel type sandwich and then you just hunt that one steel mon which is really fun I found a bunch of just random shinies in the overworld which is super fun super fun especially with my reaction when I see them it's like oh my god it's because you're not really expecting it however lack of shiny animation um, whether it be a sound whether it be a visual pop has been taken away and I think that kind of needs to come back it's it's part of the shiny experience hearing that sound noticing the the um, the shine or the sparkle whether it be stars or squares and then you see if there's a mark as well I think that that needs to come back but overall replayability of the game I don't think I'm gonna have a single problem obviously I haven't mentioned on here the terror rates that I mean that I really enjoyed the Char Charizard raid um, until about day two it got a bit bland they're doing like um, 
a Tyranitar and Salamence day. I mean, it's super good because these are version exclusives, so I can't get Tyranitar in my game. And if I didn't have friends to trade with, this is a perfect opportunity to get that and get a good one with a, a, re a varying terror type and a very high level as well. So I think they they have got the very good formula for replayability of the game. And I'll, I'm very happy that I'm sure they're going to add a couple of DLCs. I'm hoping four. I don't want two. I'm hoping four and I hope they space them out very well and they expand on the areas and give us more things to do. I think the raid dens could do with a bit of tweaking, especially in terms of like health bars and lags, but I'm sure that's somewhere in the net code that they can fix at some point. The terror raids will definitely get fixed, um, whether overworld graphics do or not is another story. But the replayability of the game, I have no problem in saying that I'll be playing this for a long, long time until the next Pokemon game comes out, as always. But yeah, I think it's a very good game for replay. Okay, let's wrap it up. So, graphics. I gave it a 2. There's certain things that just aren't acceptable in a game, i.e. random crashes for no apparent reason, so the user doesn't know what they've done wrong or what to avoid. The game just crashes and then it's gone. You lose your progress if autosave isn't on, and even with autosave on, you're still losing a little bit of progress. It's not on, that can't happen. Um, in terms of graphical glitches appearing underneath the map, Pokemon spawning in walls, spawning in objects, you can't see them, you might miss a shiny that you've been hunting for ages. Imagine spending hours trying to get a shiny and then it just so happened that it spawned in a wall somewhere that you didn't see. I suppose you'd never know until you encounter them when they're in the walls. So I've had have I have had times where that's happened where not shinies but encountering Pokemon in a wall. It it just it needs to be fixed. Um that would bump up to a free four Territory would be optimization lag fixes in terms of FPS drops and uh, just general optimization of menus. And to get it to a five, they would have to upscale the res from 144p textures up to whatever, like 360p. And they had to at least double it. The, the textures need completely revamping. So I gave it a two. I think it's a fairly fair score. On to sound, I gave it a five. Flawless for me, didn't have a problem with any of them, there's some absolute bangers in the soundtrack, I love the majority of sounds, they ha there isn't any area where I run through and think, oh this soundtrack just really annoys me, so 5 out of 5 for sound. Controls, I gave it a 3, it's just bang average, there's a couple of clunky controls, um, I think the mapping is a bit weird, but I'm sure I'll get used to it, very personal thing controls, but other than like trying to latch onto walls and not spamming B constantly or having to press A multiple times for eggs, it's overall it's just an average free. Storyline, this is where the game flourishes, I gave it a 4, 5 out of 5, Why? how could it have been a 5 out of 5, I think the school storyline just needed a bit more plot behind it other than just doing the Pokemon League, I think there needed to be some extra things maybe like instead of the classes which are like optional maybe they were like battle tournaments where you could have gone and so you were doing like a, an ice class they could have been like an ice quote unquote tournament you could have done where you could only take in three ice mons and then battle against a load of other ice mons so that would have been a fun thing to pad out the school story a bit i feel like i just went into school and then left and went on my adventure and then came back and i was like the champion in terms of replayability i gave it a four pre-game to post-game is night and day area zero with all the paradox pokemon and then the story behind area zero as well is amazing and i think that's the plot that the main game needed it lacked what the post game have in terms of competitive pokemon i think they've done really nice balances in terms of quality of life in terms of getting all your vitamins making pokemon easier to get instead of people turning to gen bots and then the raids as well the raids are great they're very difficult you need to think about what you're doing you can't just go in and solo them like you used to be able to in the dynamax raids so i think they've done a very good job on replayability and hopefully the dlcs match up to the standards that they've set already so overall I've given it a 3.6 out of 5. I think it's an okay score. I think it's a, a very representative score of what I think the game is actually in its current state. Once I've got into battling, I might change my mind, but just after my original playthrough and completing the Pokedex, I think this is a very average game, average to better game. It could have been pushed to a 4, but 
the game crashes and the optimization. It's the graphics that let it down, and I think that's the general consensus of most of the Pokemon community. Does it take away from I'm, that I'm enjoying the game and actually playing the game? No. Am I ever going to tell anyone to not play this game? No, because you should be... It's your life. It's your game. If you enjoy it, you play it. I'm going to play it. Everyone else is playing it. Even the people that are slating it are still playing it, so take it with a pinch of salt. But let me know. Do you agree with my opinions? Do you think I've missed some things that might have actually changed my mind? Put them in the comments below. Let me see what you think. And if you've got any other suggestions for any more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos that you'd like to see from me, please let me know again in the comments section. But for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye